Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 24, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Xavier today wrote up a Python script that uses Outlook.com as a covert channel. The use of popular cloud services like this for covert channels and data exfiltration, of course, has become more and more popular. Cloud services often offer APIs that are easily scripted. And then, of course, the wide use of these cloud services and enterprises makes the covert channel traffic really sort of disappear in all of the noise of the legitimate traffic to these services. Now, in this case, discovered by Xavier, the command control channel actually doesn't use sort of any fancy Outlook 365 APIs. Instead, it uses good old email protocols. The bot essentially just the polls for new emails via IMAP. There's a specific account that's sort of being configured in that bot and the emails that are being read will then contain any commands for the bot. Now, if there's any data that's coming back as a result of the commands, that's then being sent to the same outlook.com address via SMTP. Of course, the TLS versions of both protocols are being used, uh, making detection even more difficult. I think if anything, uh, maybe the volume, the number of requests over time uh, for these IMAP SMTP connections could sort of raise suspicion uh, for an analyst monitoring the networks carefully. But overall, this is the kind of uh, covert channel that is uh, fairly uh, difficult to detect. And Apple today released one of its massive updates. The most significant part was the release of Mac OS 13 Ventura iPadOS also received a new major version, jumping straight from 15 to 16.1, which is now in sync with iOS, because also for iOS, we got 16.1. Of course, the original 16 version came a little bit earlier for iOS a few weeks ago. The update patches, I think I counted 108 uh, different vulnerabilities. Now this is across all the different operating systems. Many of the vulnerabilities affect multiple operating systems, which is why Apple typically releases these updates for everything because they want to make sure that the vulnerability being patched in one operating system is then not exploited against another one of their oper operating systems. Most notable is uh, CVE 2022-42827. Uh, this is a vulnerability that affects iOS and iPad OS. It allows applications to execute code using kernel privileges. So this is a little bit more approach escalation, really, uh, because the victim first has to install uh, the application. Of course, any application is able uh, to execute code as the victim. Uh, so it's really not critical really the way sort of I typically rate it. I still rated this vulnerability critical because it is already exploited in the wild. You do not have to upgrade all the way to iPad OS 16.1 or Mac OS Ventura to get the security updates. Apple also released updates for the older versions of the operating systems. And Cisco released an update for its identity services engine. Cisco rates the upgrade as high. The highest scale would be critical. The update affects the web-based management interface of all things and a successful exploit would allow an attacker to read and modify files that they would otherwise not have access to. And as a reminder, to be careful with what Chrome extensions you install, Nadi Tal from Guardio Labs reports in a blog post that they looked at a campaign that they call Dormant Colors. Uh, with installed 
The respective browser extensions have been downloaded and likely installed a few million times. And browser extensions have full access to any website you're loading in your browser. They're able to read and modify the code that's being delivered by a server. They can also intercept, modify any data that is being sent back by the user. So full control over everything you are doing. All of the 30 or so extensions that I observed followed the same theme of allowing the users access to basically color related style sheet features and such. Uh, when initially installed, the extension actually works as advertised. It doesn't contain any malicious functionality and it remains like this for a while. That's of the dormant part here in dormant colors. And uh, then it uh, waits for it being updated sort of on the fly, it downloads additional code. This of course keeps it first of all flexible. They could change that code at any time. Also makes it more difficult to figure out that the extension is malicious because if you just you know, download it, run some tests, on it, it uh, looks uh, just uh, fine. Now, once uh, the evil part kicks in, then the extension will do things like uh, exfiltrate your history, inject ads, and uh, do a bunch of other things uh, that are then more explained in the Guardio Lab uh, blog post. Well, and this is it for today. So, thanks again for listening, and talk to you again tomorrow.